When you hear the word judgment, what comes to your mind? Does it come anxiety, fear, or joy and hope? Today we're going to talk about judgment in the minor prophets. Our guest today is Dr. Girgi Mosca, a Dean of the Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary at Andrews University. This is faithful to the scriptures, and we invite you to take your Bible, a notebook, and join the conversation. Dr. Moskala, we're going to talk today about uh, the other minor prophets, the second right. part uh, in, this, uh, in this series. Uh, one of the questions that comes to my mind is that these prophets very often speak about judgment. God mm -hmm. is going to come and He's going to judge. Uh, and, and sometimes this is connected with the day of the Lord. How can we understand the language of judgment in the prophetic literature? Well, in the you know, when we speak about judgment, usually people are scared. Yeah. The, the usual um, reaction to it is that they fear God's judgment. Mm -hmm. I ask that question, you know, how do you feel when um, the, come the message to you that God is your judge, that God will judge you? <coughs> and in all continents, in uh, people with uh, different uh, education, uh, different uh, social background, political background, always the first reaction was, we fear, fear. Yes. fear. Well, but um, the biblical message um, is different. Mm. We usually think that judgment is about condemnation, mm. you know, about punishment, about death. But this is secondary meaning of God's judgment. The primary meaning of God's judgment, and I did uh, very thorough and very, uh, you know, deep studies on it. You have published um, articles on this, right? I, I published uh, two articles on uh, the issue of God's judgment, and uh, maybe it can be available on the screen later yes. on. But uh, uh, let, let me stress that to judge according to the Bible, that the primary meaning is to be justified. Mm. To judge means to justify. To judge means to save. Mm. To judge means to deliver. And to judge means also to vindicate. So God is the one who wants to justify us. Every time when we confess our sins and God is forgiving, we are passing through God's judgments. Mm. And when He forgives, He acquits. Mm. So, so we are judged, positively judged. We are saved. Wow. Uh, we are justified. And now, it means that we are saved. Um, we were condemned to death and now we are saved from this death. And eternal life is giving us. And mm. we are not only justified and saved, but we are, we are now also delivered from the power of sin. Mm. And uh, it's like liberation. The, the, for example, the whole book of Judges is mm -hmm. telling us that the judges were not sent uh, to condemn God's people, but to liberate them from the oppression of the enemies. Mm -hmm. And uh, then God is here also to vindicate us. Satan is accusing us of many things, wrong things, maybe rightly, correctly, but we put it everything into God's hands. We confess mm -hmm. openly, honestly, sincerely our sins, so it is forgiven. We are acquitted and God is on our side. God is for us, not against us. And this is our judge. Mm. And uh, so I am always excited when I speak about God's judgment. You, you, you can see it right now. And of course, if person is uh, hearing God's message of love and is uh, now um, not accepting, rebelling, uh, and it's a uh, you know, destroyer instead of a um, loving person, so, of course, then that person cannot be justified, cannot be saved, cannot mm. be delivered from the power of sin and, and evil, and cannot be vindicated. So, in that case, the other side of God's judgment comes. But Not positive, but negative. And but this is condemnation, and punishment, and death. But before you go to the other side, you, you have uh, very clearly uh, explained 
why judgment is a positive thing. Could we make a connection with the, um, the idea that in the book of Judges, the judges were people who led the people to defend them, to... Yes, to the, this is a one positive. Of of the um, uh, good, positive things God is giving us the whole book, mm -hmm. like judges, in order to understand that um, judge is not called to put people down, to condemn them, to punish them, but actually to deliver from the oppression of enemies. Uh, these judges are called to care, to protect um, uh, for God's people. And this is actually the prayer of David. Three times David is praying, judge me, O Lord. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Uh, he's not, uh, not asking, condemn me, Lord, no, no, no. you know, punish me. He's asking, Lord, you take my case into your hands. There are many people against me. I have nobody who can defend me. But you, Lord, judge me, oh Lord. Like, justify me, save me, deliver, vindicate. And this is very positive. Um, we should pray the prayer of David. Mm -hmm. If we don't pray that God cannot justify, save, deliver, and vindicate. And, and we have the, uh, the message, the first angel message in, in, in Revelation 14, yes. it says that the hour of his judgment has come. Exactly. So that is good news. This is because the time it's the when God wants to do all these things for us. Yes. yes. It is the gospel. It is the good news of the gospel it's that God's news. judgment is coming. And this is why my article, for example, one of these two, I called, um, I put a title, um, Judgment as salvation. Mm. Th this is all about. And only when you don't want to be saved, which would be the greatest foolishness, of yes. course, so comes the other side of God's judgment. So let's think about the book of um, uh, Sephaniah. Okay. Sephaniah uh, uh, thinks, uh, talks about this. That's correct. Uh, you know, the book of Sephaniah, the, the name, as I already mentioned, is usually also mm, the core of the message. And the, the name, uh, Sephaniah means the Lord shelters or the Lord hides. Mm. And the whole book is actually uh, um, full of imagery about God's judgment in the terms that the Lord, the day of the Lord will come. And this uh, term, the day of the Lord, is occurring actually seven times in that book. Mm. And uh, the description of the day of the Lord is very um, serious. Mm. Uh, let, let me uh, let me read, uh, read um, yes, um, a few verses here. For example, he says, "The great day of the Lord is near. Uh, the day of the Lord um, um, will be bitter. The day will be a day of wrath, distress, anguish, trouble, ruin, darkness, gloom, clouds, blackness, trumpet, battle cry, uh, bring uh, distress, and so forth." Th that when you hear that language, you need to take it seriously. So this is a very negative uh, view of the judgment. You were yes, talking about the other exactly, side. Exactly, because uh, people are not listening. So they need to take God seriously. God is our judge. You cannot play with the God, with, with our God. Uh, this is why you have later on even uh, neither your silver nor your gold will be able to save, to save you. Only God. And this is why you have that uh, name Sephaniah, the Lord shelters. Mm. And uh, the main core message is in chapter 2, verse 3, when you have, Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, you who do what He commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. In reality, it's not on the day, but in the day. Mm. And, and you can see that there is a pun, the play with words. Mm -hmm. uh, if we seek the Lord, we seek His righteousness, we, we seek um, in humility the Lord, so perhaps you will be sheltered. Mm. The Lord shelters. This is the um, uh, title of the book, The Lord Shelters. And now the main core message is, yes, if you will come back to the Lord, He is able to shelter you in that day of uh, calamity, in that day of judgment, in that day which is called here the day of the Lord. So uh, we cannot hide before God. Yes. We can only hide in Him. Mm. And uh, we can, if we are friends with the Lord, and we walk humbly with Him every day, 
so weak. Mm -hmm. This perhaps is changed for certainly. Uh, if we play with the Lord and we, you know, manipulate with Him, and uh, our um, religion is uh, superficial, it's only outward religion, mm -hmm. but not at the core of our heart mm -hmm. that it's changing uh, us to be different and be like God. So uh, then, of course, it will be only perhaps. Well, mm -hmm. if it is like that, there is no salvation. But if we really come with the whole heart, we seek the Lord, we seek His righteousness, we seek Him humbly, so it comes to that certainty that He will shelter us in the day of the Lord. You have, uh, you have made a very good point because when we read uh, Sephaniah and we read all this uh, negative language uh, of all the judgments in the sense of um, catastrophes and punishment that yes, will come, you know. we, 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 come we, we become um, afraid. Yes. But uh, if we understand the title of the book, we're mm -hmm. going to understand that the main message is, yes, that is coming, but if you exactly. trust in the Lord, then He will shelter you. Yes, and, and at the end of this um, uh, tiny book, it is only three chapters, mm -hmm. you have um, imageries about God which are never repeated in the whole Bible hmm. again. Can it's you tell us unique, some of them? Uh, for example, in um, verse 17 of chapter 3, you have the statement that you need to um, rejoice and, and be glad, not, not fear. And why? Because the Lord, your God, is with you. Hmm. He is mighty to save. It's a, in original language, he's a mighty warrior okay. to save you. And he saved us already on the cross. Yes, he's course. fighting for us. So yes. he's for us, he's personal God. He is with us and he's fighting for us mm -hmm. to save. And then he has great delight in you. Mm. And then he will quiet you with his love. Mm -hmm. I like that imagery. When yes. we are crying, you know, like our babies and yes. you know, children are crying, what we are doing? We take we them into our arm yes. and our love is quieting yes. them that yes. they can sleep after yes. a few minutes because we are, well, you know, caressing yes. them, having them, you know. God is here portrayed like this loving parent who is quieting us mm. with his love. What did be and then what a beautiful image. it's um, in the same verse statement and he will rejoice over you with singing. Mm. God is singing a singer, song huh? of love and victory over us, and we need to listen because it's a beautiful song for in every individual. God has His song. What what a beautiful image! Well, several beautiful images there. Yes. Yeah. Let's go now to the book of Habakkuk. Okay. This book is uh, very. Uh, um, common and very important for uh, New Testament um, writers because uh, there is this uh, assertion there that the righteous will live by faith. That's correct. Um, you know, the, the book of Habakkuk is again uh, the book which brings God's embrace to us. Mm. But, um, you know, God loves us. Uh, he is smiling on us. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the, you know, English translation of the, of the name Habakkuk means embracing okay. or embracer. But the message is here in that book, not so much that God is embracing us, but it's uh, now like a response that we need to embrace Him. Mm. He's like, uh, you know, when we are parents coming home, Little children, when they see us, they are running um, to, meet us. To, to meet us. And what do we do? We are opening our arm. Yes. And now God is the one who is like in the background, uh, have, embracing, um, us. embracing us. But the stress in the book is that we need to embrace Him. him. And how we can embrace Him? Only by faith. Um, you know, um, the whole book of Habakkuk is different than others. It's not that he's now prophesying something for the future, even though there is a little prophecy there that Babylonians will mm -hmm. come. But all the book is dialogue. Mm. It's a dialogue between prophet and God. And God is responding to the very hard questions mm -hmm. of, of uh, Habakkuk. He's complaining, mm -hmm. he's disappointed. He, he looks around himself and see only problems. Mm -hmm. God's justice is uh, perverted um, uh, there is um, uh, criminality and iniquity and wickedness in the church and the state, it was at the same time, and he's complaining, Lord, 
how long will I cry to you and you are silent? Mm. And this is very existential even for us. We are crying to God, we are praying, and we are asking for healing and this. And it looks like that God is silent, mm. that God is far away. And this is existential problem also for Habakkuk. He looks around, and more he looks around, more problems he sees. So at the end of the book, you have that he is looking not around, because then it brings you down, but he looks up. Mm. It's a beautiful prayer. But before he goes into the prayer, he has comparison between the righteous and between the wicked. Yeah. And this wicked is like uh, typified with Babylonians who are very arrogant and doing uh, vile, you know, plenty of injustice and they are very violent. And but so they are on. also very victorious. And, uh, and That's very right. So, so it seems like the evil triumphs. Mm -hmm. So how it is with the righteous? Evil pays. Yeah. So then in the midst of um, things which um, speaks about the wicked, and how the wicked uh, will end bad because there are five wicked mm -hmm. uh, woes against uh, all the so wicked um, uh, um, people are under the woes uh, mm -hmm. of God here in chapter two. You have that statement uh, about the righteous. Yes, how the wicked lives by pride, mm -hmm. you know, by boasting, by mm -hmm. um, trying to um, live according to his views and uh, violently. But uh, how the righteous lives? The by righteous faith? live by faith, not by proofs, by scientific um, you know, evidences. Uh, the righteous lives not by miracles, by um, something fantastic which will go. No, the righteous live by God's word. Mm. And he will take this word by faith. Mm. And this is why you have that statement that in the midst of these calamities which comes and uh, in the midst of questions you have no answers, the righteous wait, wait for the Lord, wait for His revelation, wait for His word. In other words, wait for His promises mm. and is relying on these promises. So this is why you have that key statement here in chapter 2 verse 4 that the righteous will live by his face. Now we have a question here because there is a small variant uh, in the manuscripts uh, regarding this assertion That's because right. if I remember correctly the Septuagint says that the righteous, uh, God says the righteous will live by my faith mm -hmm. and I think that Masoretic text says that the righteous will live by his faith. Yes. So which one is correct? <laughs> Um, yes, <laughs> both are correct uh, because I think that both wants to um, stress something from the richness which we have in that Hebrew phrase. Mm. Um, you can read it really in uh, the sense that um, the righteous will live by his faith. Um, well, his, what does it mean, his faith? Mm -hmm. uh, um, in the Masoretic text is saying his faith like personal faith, mm. personal faithfulness, that the righteous really is responding to God's revelation, to God's embrace, mm -hmm. to, to God's love toward mm -hmm. us. And the righteous, even though has nothing like proofs in the hands, has these mighty acts of God in the past. Mm. And he goes back to his word and see how God was leading, so he relies by faith on this word of God, on his promises. It was fulfilled, so I know by faith that it will be also fulfilled in the future. So this, uh, the righteous will live by faith means, or by his faith, means by his personal faith. That it's, uh, it's a personal faith. It's not faith of my father or my mother mm -hmm. or my um, you know, church mm -hmm. uh, or some groups of people. It's my, my faith. So it's association, uh, the faith with faithfulness. But also uh, it's an allusion that God is faithful. So the righteous live by the faithfulness of God, by His faith. Um, we can be faithful only because God is faithful to us. Mm. We can um, love because He loves us. We can smile because he smiles on us. And this is this association that the, this is why Septuagint, um, you know, Greek authors um, or translators, when they want to 
put it that everybody can understand, they put instead of his, my, that mm -hmm. the Lord says, the righteous will live by my faith. It means by God's faithfulness, by God's actions, what he is doing for us. And these actions must be my actions. Yes. So it's, um, we are saved by faith in God. Salvation comes not through faith, but from God. But this faith must be my faith, my personal mm -hmm. faith in, in that God. So it's very beautiful. And it uh, actually culminates then in chapter 3 with that personal prayer of Habakkuk that no matter what will be around me, I will nevertheless always trust, trust in the Lord. So he responds, uh, he, he lives like the righteous by faith. Himself. Exactly. This is a very good, um, you know, example of it. At the end, uh, you know, he, when he is um, um, speaking about um, these mighty acts of God, he's saying, well, please, Lord, renew them mm. in our days. Because we would like that mm. God would do something like he did in the past with Egyptians. Then when the Egyptian army was uh, coming and destroying, he opened the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. When they needed to go to um, uh, the Promised Land, he opened the uh, River Jordan. He performed plenty of miracles. He was even able uh, to stop the sun and moon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, all these mighty acts are in that last prayer. And it breaks uh, into the situation when he says, well, you know, when I look into my present situation, in the past you did this, but in the, my present situation, you know, oh, I am in distress. And, uh, and um, he is saying even, you know, I hurt, and my heart pounded, my lips quivered mm -hmm. of the sound, you know. Plenty of um, attacks are there. We, we can be afraid. Decay crept into my bones, mm. and my legs trembled. Yet, and this is in spite of everything, mm -hmm. I will wait patiently mm. for that day of judgment. And then he says, though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crops fails and the fields produce no food, though there is, and there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet, nevertheless, in spite of everything, that there will be famine, no food, um, no prosperity, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. Why? Because God, the Lord, is my strength. Mm. So, um, yes, um, sometimes we go through life, um, through situations, we don't have the answers, we are frustrated, we think that God is far away, He's silent, but God is here mm. and we can trust Him. As He fulfilled His word in the past, He will fulfill it in the future and He is fulfilling in the presence. In spite of everything, what we wish to experience mm -hmm. and we are not, God is there. And God can give us strength um, uh, to, to go through it. And to and have uh, that faith that uh, he talks and about. Yes, and, it, and uh, now it's this faith associated with joy. Mm -hmm. You see, he's not saying only, well, then I will wait patiently for the Lord. Yes, like well, a via crucis or something like yes, that, yes. a very difficult time. Um, and I know that um, the Lord is my strength. No, he's saying, I will rejoice in the Lord because um, uh, uh, I will have joy in my God who is my Savior. Mm. So this joy of life is very important. When we know who is God, when um, we trust Him, the result is that we experience true joy in life. We can rejoice in spite of difficulties of life because we have that another dimension, that vertical dimensions. Not only that we look around ourselves, but we look up. And from this looking up, we have hope and future. We have still a, a, a little more minutes, and I would like you to talk a little bit on the book of Haggai. It's okay. a small book, but has a powerful message. Yes, yeah, only, only two chapters yes. and five sermons. Hmm. Uh, four for the people and one for the individual, hmm. for, for the Zerubbabel. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's actually a book which is um, 
you know, in the midst of great disappointments, mm -hmm. when people came from the Babylon exile with great expectations, every, we are back home, God is promising He will be with us, so they are starting to build the temple, you know, things, and the opposition comes. Mm -hmm. And it's very strong. And it's uh, bigger and bigger, and they are praying to God, and it seems like nothing happens. So, mm -hmm. uh, because opposition comes, they are more and more discouraged, and they stop the working on the work on the temple of God to renew that true true worship with with the Lord. But they are starting to be distracted and starting to work on their houses, and within like 15 years. There is no more this enthusiasm, this joy, and, and they're working. working, and there is no blessing of God. Yes. So God is steering the prophet in that crisis, spiritual yes. crisis, when they're home and they don't, don't see the, what, uh, what they expected. On the contrary, they, they see that the blessing is like uh, disappearing from mm -hmm. them. God is uh, calling uh, Haggai, mm -hmm. and later on also, very soon, was like a support Zechariah. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, these two prophets will, will prophesy Zechariah longer. And uh, Haggai only for three and a half months is one of the most successful prophets. Because he is uh, bringing God's message, and uh, some messages are very short, like the second message is only God is with you, <laughs> thus says the Lord. Very short sermon. But very effective. Very, very powerful. And what is it's great is that people are responding. Mm. And not only like the high priest or the priests um, or only people um, or the, the leadership in the country. You know, Zerubbabel, Joshua, uh, priests, uh, people. Everyone. Everybody is now responding to, to the Lord. And this is so powerful, and they are starting to build the house of the Lord. And in spite of the difficulties, God is blessing, and as we know from the history, within five years it was finished. Hmm. Uh, what God prepared before, they did not use. So God gave like another chance. And they and, took it. And they took it, and, and they are working to, together with the Lord. And it's, it's powerful, it's beautiful. So at the end, in that fourth sermon, when you have a message for the whole people, God is saying, mark it very carefully, pay attention to it. From this day on, I'm going to. I will bless you. Yes. I will bless you. And, and w what else uh, we can uh, pray for? You know, that God will be with us. And when he is with us, he is blessing. And with his blessing, everything else is there. Yes. So, uh, th this is a very powerful, beautiful book, book of uh, Haggai, which is uh, like a steering, you know, people of today saying, mm -hmm. um, you know, build, build uh, what God is telling us, build the house of the Lord, build his church. Um, build things which are eternal with the good principles of life. And I will be with you and I will bless you.